Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures on Math 095, Basic Algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 7.11, which is applications of quadratic equations. Now, we're going to uh, apply all those tools we use for applications. We're going to read the problems. We're going to read them again. We're going to read them again. And then we're going to assemble our equation, maybe draw an illustration to help us uh, visualize what's happening. And then uh, we're going to read the equation again to make sure that we actually answer the question. So the, let's start. The first thing we're going to look at is this application here. It says, if the sides of a square are increased by 5 meters, the area becomes 100 square meters. Find the length of the sides of the original square. All right, so I've read it. I'm familiar with the terminology. I know what a square is. And uh, I know what area is, and I have to know a formula for that. And I'm going to write that down right now. Area of a square is a side squared, because it's a square. All sides are equal, one side times the other. All right, I'm going to read it again. It says, if the sides of a square are increased by 5 meters, the area becomes 100 square meters. Find the length of the sides of the original square. So I'm going to draw an illustration here, because I'm told about two squares. So here's one square, and well, squarish. And if I increase the sides by 5, let's just draw another square. That's going to be a little bit bigger. It's increased by 5. Um, it asks us to find the length of the sides of the original square. Well, we don't know what these sides are, so I'll say that this side is x. And since it's a square, all sides are the same. We're told that this square is increased by 5 compared to this side. If we uh, add 5 to the sides of this side, its area becomes 100 square meters. So this is where I'm going to employ that equation. We're ready to build that equation. So if I take x plus 5 and I square it, this times that, its area will be 100 square meters. That's what we're told. Now, we actually have a quadratic. We were able to build our equation. And now we can solve it. Well, I have to FOIL this out. So I'm going to get x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 100. To solve a quadratic, we set it equal to 0. x squared plus 10x minus 75 equals 0. Just subtract 100 from both sides. To now solve this, I have to find the value, uh, because our coefficient is 1, what are the factors of negative 75 that, when summed together, give me 10? Well, they're going to have different signs. So I have x times x. One's positive and one's negative. Well, if I take 5 times 15, I would get 75. And I know 5 and 15 have a difference of 10 the larger value is positive. So x plus 15, x minus 5. And if we use our uh, zero product theorem, which just means 0 times anything is 0, what would make this 0? x equal to negative 15. What would make this one 0? x equal to 5. So I found x equals negative 15 or 5. Now, if we go back to the problem and read it, it says, if the sides of a square are increased by 5 meters, the area becomes 100 square meters. So if we check these values back to our illustrations that we drew to help us understand, if I put in negative 15, I would have a square with negative 15 as its sides. Well, this is a distance. And distance are never negative. This is an extraneous solution. We can't have negative distances. So sometimes when we go back to the problem and read it, we have to think about it and say, does my answer make sense? A negative value for distance does not make sense. So then I have 5. Well, let's check it. OK, if I have a distance of 5 and I increase it by 5 meters, its area will be 100. Well, 5 plus 5, if this is 5, 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 times 10 is, in fact, 100. So the lengths of the sides of the original square were 5 meters. And we use units because it is an application problem. So 
Imploring our uh, strategies, maybe we draw an illustration, but we definitely have to read our problem a minimum of four times as we work through the problem. And you can see how we applied a quadratic equation to this to find that value. All right, let's look at another uh, application. It says the product of two consecutive even integers is 440. Find the integers. Well, if we recall what consecutive integers are, it's numbers right next to each other on the number line. Consecutive even integers would be like 2, 4, 6, 8. Those are our even integers. And they're always two spots on the number line away from one another. So if I have a number, its next consecutive even integer is going to be two more than the first. Now, it tells me that the product of the two consecutive even integers is 440. The product tells me to multiply. So if I multiply these two even consecutive integers, I will get 440. So now, just like in the last problem, I have to remove these parentheses. So I'm going to distribute x squared plus 2x equals 440. And now that it's in uh, this form, I can set it equal to 0 because that's quadratic in standard form is set equal to 0. I subtract 440 from both sides. Now, if I factor this, since this coefficient is 1, I can say, what are the factors of 440? Now, this is a relatively large number. And we could write out the factors until we find them. But for time purposes, I'm just going to assume that you can do that. So if we're going to factor this, we're going to get uh, negative 20 and positive 22. 20 times 22 is 440. A negative times a positive is negative. Now, the reason why the larger value is positive is because this term is positive. So now I know x equals 20 or negative 22. Now, don't be too quick to say, well, the negative value is extraneous, because in this case, it won't be. If we reread the problem, it says the product of two consecutive even integers is 440. Well, let's go back to this right here. If the value is negative 22, so I put negative 22 in for x, the next even consecutive integer, negative 22 plus 2, would be negative 20. Do these consecutive even integers, if I multiply them together, product, does it give me 440? Negative 22 times a negative 20 is a positive 440. So that works. Well, if I put 20 in here and I add 2 to it for the next integer, I'd have positive 22. 20 times 22 is also 440. So find the integers. These are the integers. Negative 22 and negative 20 is one set of even consecutive integers. And 20 and 22 is one set of even consecutive integers. So these are the integers whose product would be 440. These are consecutive. These are consecutive. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this here. We, it says, find the length of the shorter leg of a right triangle if the longer leg is 10 inches more than the shorter leg. And the hypotenuse is 10 inches less than twice the shorter leg. Now, I've seen the word shorter leg pop up three different times in here. I'm going to underline that. And I'm relatively familiar with right triangles and hypotenuse. I'm, I'm familiar with those terms, so I'm comfortable with it. I'm going to read it again. It says, find the length of the shorter leg. Well, if we're provided an illustration, we can use that. If we're not, maybe we know what a right triangle is, and we can draw that illustration for ourselves. Well, from my illustration, this is the shorter leg, this is the longer leg, and this is the hypotenuse. So I have given information. It asks me to find the shorter leg. Well, I'm going to assign that as my variable. It tells me that uh, the longer leg is 10 inches more than the shorter leg. Well, 10 inches more than x is x plus 10. It tells me the hypotenuse, the longest leg, is 10 inches less than twice the shorter leg. Twice the shorter leg, 10 inches less than that would be subtracting 10. So now that we have this, we can go ahead 
and use Pythagorean theorem, because that's something we have to know when we deal with right triangles. So if we recall Pythagorean, x squared, or excuse me, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, I just have to replace these variables. Let's call this side a and this side b. And the hypotenuse, of course, is side c. So I'd have x squared plus this distance squared, which is x plus 10 squared, equals the hypotenuse squared. So I take this distance, 2x plus 10, oh, minus 10, and I square it. Well, now we have to essentially eliminate these parentheses and combine some like terms. So if I FOIL this out, I get x squared plus uh, 20x plus 100. If I FOIL this out, I get 4x squared minus 40x plus 100. And this term is what it is. Now I can combine some like terms. x squared and x squared, well, this would be 2x squared plus 20x plus 100 equals 4x squared minus 40x plus 100. Now, I notice I have a quadratic here, and I have a quadratic here. Well, to deal with quadratics, you set them equal to 0. So if I set this equal to 0, and I'm just going to subtract the smaller value from both sides, if I subtract 2x squared from both sides, I'm going to get 2x squared. And if I subtract 20 x's from both sides, I'm going to get negative 60x on one side. And if I subtract 100 from both sides, well, the value actually goes away. And that's, going to, that's actually very beneficial. That's one less value to deal with. So I subtracted everything from the left side over to the right side. And now I can start factoring. I notice these two values each are divisible by 2, and they contain an x. So I'm going to factor out a 2x, which would leave me with x minus 30. Well, now I use that zero product theorem, and I say, well, this x, the value that would make it 0, is 0. 0 times anything is 0. And the value of x that would make this 0, 30 minus 30, and remember, it's just the opposite of that. So I have two values, x equals 0 and 30. Now, if we go back to the problem and reread it, it says find the length, and so we're dealing with a distance, of the shorter leg. And we could read through the rest. But if we're looking for this, does it make sense to have a distance of 0? If this distance was 0, then this distance would be 10. And this distance would be a negative 10. We can't have a negative distance. 0 is not a reasonable solution. So then we have 30. Well, we'd have 30 here, 40 here. And 30 times 2 is 60 minus 10 is 50. 30, 40, 50. 30 squared plus 40 squared is uh, 2,500, right? Yep. And uh, let's see, what did we say? This would be 50. 50 squared is 2,500. So the sum of these equals that using Pythagorean theorem. So my answer makes sense, and it's reasonable. And we're told that the length is in inches. So we found that the length of the shorter side is 30 inches. So we make sure that we include those units. All right, we're going to look at one more application problem. It says an orchard has 550 pear trees. The number of rows exceeds the number of trees per row by 3. How many trees are in each row? So let's draw a little illustration. So let's say that this is my field that I have my orchard in. And this uh, is going to have 550 pairs. Finding uh, the number of pairs is very similar to finding area, a length times a width in, you know, in concept. The number of rows exceeds the number of trees per row. So we have a certain amount of rows. And in each row, we have a certain amount of trees. So what are we told? We're told that the number of rows exceeds the number of trees by 3. So I don't know the number of trees. It asks me how many trees are there in each row. I don't know. But I do know that the number of rows exceeds that by 3. Now, if we take the number of rows of trees times the number of trees, 
we will have the total amount of trees. Well, we're told that the orchard has 550 pear trees. So I'm going to take the number of trees times the number of rows, and that will tell me that I have 550 pear trees. Now, again, we have our equation. We're ready to solve it. We're going to distribute x squared plus 3x equals 550. Every quadratic we set equal to 0. And if we factor this, for time's sake, I'm just going to factor it. You could write out these factors and determine which ones have a difference of 3. We're going to have x, uh, let's see, plus 25 minus 22. So now we can uh, use the zero product theorem. And that basically says x would be negative 25 to make this factor 0, and 22 to make this factor 0. And now we go back to the problem. We found two solutions. We don't know if they're accurate or if they make sense. So we read it again. It says our orchard has 550 trees. The number of rows exceeds the number of trees by 3. How many trees do I have? Can I have a negative amount of trees? No, that doesn't make sense. That is an extraneous value. So if I have 22 trees, well, that makes sense. It's a row of 22 trees. And we would have 25 rows, because 22 plus 3 would be 25. So that's a reasonable answer. And the units are trees per row. Trees per row. How many trees are in each row? So our units are trees per row, 22. So when it comes to application problems, you're only going to build these tools by doing practice. Practice, practice, practice. And you're going to be able to get these. And keep trying and persist. This has been Section 711. Thank you for watching.